Welcome back, Terrestrials, to another episode of We Made Rob Zombie Cry. And this episode, we're... doing top five Quentin Tarantino movies. Now, I understand that this is going to be highly subjective, as you know all top fives are but people are very passionate about the ones that they like so don't jump down our throats we'll always have a conversation about it but don't attack us on our choices mm-hmm. um so with that being said let's hop into the episode jerry what's your number five I have Quentin Tarantino. Movies. All right. My number five, I, I chose Pulp Fiction okay. uh, just to start us out. I, I think it's it's a great movie. It's mm-hmm. classic. Um, mm-hmm. I like the way that it, you know, it doesn't run a narrative story. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, Pulp Fiction. Simple. Cool. 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 Um, my number five. My number five is Four Rooms. I fucking love this movie. Um, It's hilarious. I love, you know, the intertangling plot line of everybody being in this hotel and the bell keep that doesn't talk, bouncing from room to room to room. Um, It's just, it's it's a lot of fun. It's a fun Mm -hmm. movie. And it's not like any of uh, Quentin Tarantino's other movies so i'll uh, give it to you okay it's it's directed by him one uh just the pinky right one is only directed the roger rodriguez directed the benicio oh no uh yeah <laughs> um he directed one and you know yeah but no i understand what you're saying but i'll give it to you yeah yeah um when you when you google Movies directed by Quentin Tarantino. It pops up. So, uh, your number four. Four, sir. All right, my number four. I went with Death Proof. Uh, so I did like I. this. Yeah, so, you're also yeah. number four. Um, yeah, only his only horror movie that he really did. Uh, it's a great concept. It mm-hmm. does feel like old Hollywood, which mm-hmm. I like. Um, I like the fact that it's two stories, you mm-hmm. know, it's a like showing the bad guy being bad and then the bad girls being bad, basically. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, wh- what do you think of Death Proof? I mean, I love it again. Same thing. Yeah. If you've watched our last video, then, you know, um, big fan of old cars, yeah. muscle cars, classic cars and you know, Kurt Russell has that Chevelle in this, and I love Chevelle, especially that year um, or those years uh, that the body looked like that. Yeah. And on top of that, you've got Zoe Bell. I love her to death. I, like, I would marry her in a heartbeat. Rosario Dawson, and there's other people in it. Um, and Kurt Russell, I mean, the, the music is great. The action is awesome. Kurt Russell plays a great creep. uh, And the girls go bad. You know, the good girls go bad to, you know, handle the bad guy. Yeah. And uh, it's an all around great story. Original concept. It's a lot of fun to watch. Um, Yeah. And it, like you said, it feels very old school. Old uh, grindhouse. It's gritty. It's raw. I mean, it's 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 a highly underrated movie. It is. I Even think within his catalog, it's yeah. highly underrated. I think the reason is because, like the middle, I'll say, like mm-hmm. getting to, you know, that the when they're at the bar, mm-hmm. it's very. There's a lot of like mushy. Mm-hmm. chunky stuff in there yeah. and i don't think a lot of people like that part same thing go, like when we're meeting the girls and they just find that car and she's like i gotta drive it mm-hmm. no one was like well that's a class a felony and yeah <laughs> if you just take this car you know um so yeah it's like getting to point a to point b but in between point a and point b 
Nah, the, 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 it's mushy. So see, so I even enjoyed that part because again, that's another classic car, and that so like the Chevelle that Kurt Russell drives, you know, that's the main character yeah. as far as the car goes. But that other car, the Charger, I love that Charger. So yeah. this is like even when you know they're they're like oh I, I have to drive it i have to drive it. and then they're doing like you know the thing on the hood like yeah all that to me was very entertaining that i'm getting stunt. to see this badass car this hot chick on the hood like you know it was all just i don't know american old school movie to me and yeah. So I yeah, there are parts of it that are like, oh geez, hurry up. But that part specifically I didn't find like that. Yes. All right. Uh wanna go to number three. Yeah. You got yeah, anything go. else? Yeah. Nope. Um, my number three is the hateful eight. Okay. Uh, All right. I think breakout like the best like Sam jackson performance like that is his performance in there yeah like yeah. more so than kurt russell kurt russell is like a side character to yeah sam um i prefer his character i like the sheriff character who's been mm -hmm. in like yeah everything i can't i can't look at that dude without thinking of baby billy yeah like, <laughs> the entire time i'm just like baby billy baby billy yeah uh, uh, well, every time I see him, I also think of the deputy in um, uh, House of Thousand Corpses. Mm -hmm. uh, but that actor, especially, I I, yeah. I like him. I mm -hmm. think he does great in that mm -hmm. <laughs> that that uh, that movie. Um, I also feel like that wasn't the first time he used the N word, but oh. continue. <laughs> <laughs> he he's a professional actor and stuff i am I'm not, <laughs> um but yeah I, I i like it but then again the reason that it's it's number three is because of this this middle gunk it's a mm -hmm. long movie it is a very they, long movie. they they this was like oh quentin tarantino shot it in you know a high definition um eight millimeter Mm -hmm. and it's like well great too bad the whole movie takes place indoors instead of in that great scenic view of I you know, know montana mm -hmm. you only see a little bit of you know Wy wyoming <laughs> yeah wyoming, uh, but whatever. yeah I, it's so when we decided to do this for a little bit of background for people when we decided to do this list jerry was like eh, you can't really do this list without seeing the hateful eight yes and i was like shit i watched it yesterday it didn't make my list. No. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. Um, yeah, no. Sam Jackson is breakout. Oh, yeah. The writing is pretty good. Um, I love baby Billy in this movie. I think that it, him and Sam Jackson are just right there. Yeah. They're giving their best performances. Um, Especially so, like when he reads the Lincoln letter. Oh, that's it's that's great. It's great. That's, a, yeah. that's a nice touch. Yeah. Uh, thank yeah. you. It's <laughs> a real nice touch. Yeah. Um and he yeah. balls it up and throws it on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> Just like it's a piece of shit. Um yeah. but yeah, that that movie. Now when you watched it, you watched it on Netflix? Mm-hmm. Did you watch the movie or did you watch the mini series with all the extra added bonus? Like no, because hours? it's already two and a half hours long, and I don't yeah. have that much time left in my life to watch four hour movie. Yeah. Um, but I I went ahead and watched that, and I might go back and watch it because the story is good, and yeah. I like the concept, I like the idea, but it it was long. And it was one scene or it's one setting you're inside that cabin the whole damn time. And people are just barking at each other. And it's, yeah. And, and if I had to watch uh, Michael Madsen go <laughs> with his hair one more damn time, I was going to lose my mm -hmm. mind. Um, I feel like they, that was what they hired him to do. Mm -hmm. Sit there and flick your hair. Yeah. Like, 
and they yeah. killed zoe bell right uh, it, yeah no yeah that movie didn't make it kill the uh, close the door <laughs> yeah the whole time um yeah there there are like just moments in it that are really good but mm-hmm. not as good as what i'd like from him so mm-hmm. number three it goes okay all right i'm gonna rock on to number two are you just gonna skip me Oh, you, oh you, yeah, you're number three. Can I give three. you my I number you three? Chose the hateful eight against. Sorry. No, no, it didn't even make my list. Boy, you need to um, like just start writing my list down and stuff. <laughs> this would go a lot easier, dude. So my number three, I think, is going to be one of your top ones. So, uh, Inglorious Bastards. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a really good movie. It's a fun concept. I like when. I, I really enjoy when Quentin Tarantino takes a bit of history and then mixes it with one of his crazy ass ideas yeah. and produces something like this. Yeah. Um, another example would be Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. A little bit of realism with a lot of liberties. Yes. And this movie does that really well. Everybody's acting mm-hmm. uh, is incredible. Uh you know it's like it's like brad pitt's finest acting role ever outside of point break um or wait what was that no true romance true romance outside of true romance that was like brad pitt's best work um but yeah i the movie's so good um and you know it plays along the same lines as like the hateful eight you know um, it's a little bit of who done it, who's who, who's pretending, who's lying, who where the intentions lie with this character. Mm-hmm. And uh yeah, it was it was done really well. So it's my number three. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'll talk more about it when I get to my oh, it to my on my list. All right. So What's your number two. my number two is inglorious bastards <laughs> um wave way to do the misdirect there dude. yeah woo um, when i get to yeah, it which is right it, yeah. now yeah um yeah the movie's great mm-hmm. uh i had a, a tough time with my number one and my number two mm-hmm. uh finding Naturally. where it would go uh but inglorious bastards greatest villain ever put on screen Mm-hmm. Uh, bar none he is the show yeah. stealer like yeah, brad, brad pitt. pitt brad pitt is like the biggest villain that could possibly villain in that movie brad pitt mm-hmm. <laughs> well i'm talking about the, the american that's trying to stop the nazis oh, what a piece of shit let your true color <laughs> shine um no, the the Hans character is just one of the greatest villains ever put on screen. The only reason that it hits number two and not my number one is I wish the Inglorious Bastards, the Bastards, mm-hmm. and the girl running the theater mm-hmm. would would have crossed. Their stories would have crossed better because it feels like you're watching two different movies. Mm-hmm. You're watching the 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 bastards kick ass take names you know uh and then you're watching the the uh the french girl trying to get revenge at the the um on the theater and mm-hmm. i like both stories but i would like just a little bit more blend in mm-hmm. there but yeah. so that's why it just hit my number 2 by all means i am not bitching about this movie right. i Talking about it now, I want to go watch it. I still say it's probably one of his best works, but not the best work because that went to number one. All right, what was your number two? My number two is Pulp Fiction. Okay. Um, I I saw this when I was younger, and I didn't totally grasp it. And the more I watched it, the more it was like a journey watching it because I saw it when I was so young that mm-hmm. like a lot of the stuff was just like. Um, and then as I got older and I continued watching it, I was like, oh, oh, oh. And so it was like, it, it's always been there. It's always been a part of like my childhood growing up into teens, 20s and so on. Mm-hmm. Um, and the stories are just really good. Yeah. Uh, you know, iconic. It's a cult classic. It's 
you know, referenced constantly. Um, It's parodied constantly. Uh, And it was also my first experience with Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. So um, it's, it it made it that high on my list because it was so memorable and continues to be so memorable. It's something that I don't have to watch a lot, but it is burned in my brain. Um, and, and you know the cast is massive mm-hmm. john travolta bruce willis sam jackson that's big enough right there on its own then mm-hmm. you had you know your smaller like uma thurman's van rains like it it's just so full of people and i love the way all the stories intertangle and it, yeah. yeah yeah now out of that what would be your like go to because they're they're like sections in the movie you know what was the go-to moment in that movie um so the most memorable is the continuation of like travolta and sam jackson throughout each set of stories because like they break off with like travolta in the heroin overdose and you know travolta in the pink cadillac diner or whatever you know with uma thurman Mm -hmm. but the but them two when they're together you know you start the movie with them in the diner and then you move to them like you know they move into the apartment and then you then they fucking kill that guy yeah (laughs) yeah yeah so like they are like the through all of mm-hmm. the movie and i like that that there's all these stories happening around them and that they interact with each story for the most part except for vin rain's uh little little bit yeah. and the boxer you know helping him out yeah but um yeah so that's why that's my number two and i'm guessing our number ones are the same so probably you want to just say them on yeah let, let's one? you want to go one two three say it right, let's go let's count to 50 and then uh, say it okay, <laughs> okay <laughs> no, cool. yeah just this is cool. okay just it's it's django it's yeah, django absolutely um you goddamn right it's django fucking yeah it's amazing yeah um, it's such a fucking good movie yeah like, yeah. yeah okay thank you for watching our yeah, we're yeah. Gonna, do we need to really go into i mean we could do a review on django um but it i feel like the western it's it's, it's like a western not western mm-hmm. because it it does have like some of those like western tropes mm-hmm. you know but like the area that we're seeing isn't very westerny mm-hmm. you know um like you know tombstone or Mm -hmm. good the bad um but there is just the jamie fox character is just amazing character he is so smooth and such a badass and again we have the same guy playing the villain or he's he's kind of the good guy in this one um dr but yeah but he's kind of also impartial which is he's the gray he's the yeah gray. he's the gray area he's... but i mean you know leo plays an amazing bad guy yeah uh, I'll, I'll give Don leo... johnson plays an yeah, amazing, amazing bad guy yeah um uh, yeah like i'll give leo a thumbs up but if we were talking about just bad guys i still say the hans character oh, yeah, in yeah, yeah. glorious bastard it's a little bit better um but leo does do a good job you know i mean i think i think leo nails this role and he did he i mean you know obviously we all know the story of him cutting his hand and all that shit so it's like he went above and beyond his character and made it even more real um and i'm sure that him slicing his hand open made his intensity more in that scene but like overall i mean every character in that movie is a character like you watch a lot of movies and you see people acting and you're like yeah okay but all these people are such big characters i mean just the only 
well that's Western... what quentin does he makes yeah. great characters yeah you know yeah yeah and he usually has really good dialogue to go with it yeah um that's why I said, man, if Rob Zombie paired up with Quentin Tarantino, <laughs> well, that yeah. would that could be the best movie ever made right there. No, yeah, you never know. Uh, I mean, you know, Quentin sold Natural Born Killers and he hates that movie, even though I say that's probably the great one of the best movies made uh, just from like a surreal like film, like a film person. I really like that movie, you Mm -hmm. know, Um, but Quentin hates it. So, I mean, could end up like Rod Zombie, you know, it's like where Quentin sees something, you know, like I, this is how I see it. And if Rob does one thing that, you know, the car was supposed to be blue, you know, I made it black. (laughs) Yeah. So it's like, well, the movie was horrible (laughs) or some (laughs) shit like that. Um, But yeah another going back to Django though um the reason that it beat Inglorious also was I think Jamie Foxx's performance 100 percent and you can't get over that is that Jamie Foxx just like delivers like perfect uh yeah 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 you know that that character so he will never top that character uh which I don't even think he'll ever try to top that character but I, he'll never top that character. And I am, and after, you know, reading all the things coming out about who could have played Django, I am so glad they turned down that role. Yeah. Like, I mean, Will Smith could have done an okay job, but all I could picture is Wild Wild West Will Smith. Mm-mm. And, you know, though he has that charming, like, smoothness, Jamie nailed that. Yeah. And I think Denzel could have brought a badassness to that, but also Jamie nailed that too. So I yeah. think that, yeah, I, I mean, the movie's incredible. We don't need to keep talking about it. Maybe we'll I review think it. I Denzel would have been different, especially when acting with Samuel. Yeah. I, it would have felt different, you know? Now, even though in The Hateful Eight, samuel really played that character well Mm -hmm. uh what was he like a marshal or yeah he was like a a general or something he was yeah colonel colonel whatever uh but even though a major um yeah yeah i i could see denzel doing a good job with that Mm -hmm. i could see will smith doing a good job with that but them portraying Django, i just can't see it you know Mm -hmm. i can't see it so 